Hey there people, welcome to a tutorial video of Townforge, a crypto MMO that we've been working on for quite some time. Um, Townforge is a truly crypto game. It is based on a decentralized blockchain and it was originally forked from the cryptocurrency Monero. However, you should note that it has been heavily modified. So the characteristics you would typically attribute to Monero do not necessarily apply to Townforge or the ones that you observe of the game Townforge and the cryptocurrency associated to it don't apply to Monero. Pretty self-evident. Um, do also note that Townforge is currently in a testnet, so all the things you see in the game or the coins you mine, etc. Uh, are temporary. So we're most likely going to be going through multiple iterations of testnets still, so please be patient and don't take things for permanent. Other than that, disclaimer level stuff, I am Suksu, I am the co-designer of uh, Townforge, however a lion's share of the work, meaning most of the work, uh, has been done by Monoramu in terms of design and implementation. So, credit goes there. Um, but, um, yeah. The game itself is open source and free. You can go and read more about it at townforge.net or join us on IRC, hashtag hashtag townforge at freenode. Um, you can download pre-compiled binaries over here or you can download the source code yourself uh, which will come with the game engine Orho 3D or you could buy, build your own client if you will. Um, I, I think that covers about the disclaimer level stuff, yeah. Alright, so how to actually get to play Townforge and how to interact with the network? Well. Since Townforge is a decentralized blockchain based game, you need to have a way to communicate, communicate with the other nodes and we're going to do that via a diamond. So I'm currently running Windows 10 uh, with the pre-compiled binaries, but regardless of your OS this is probably going to look pretty much the same. And much of this is probably very obvious to you already if you're a crypto enthusiast, but I'm trying to cover also the gamers and so forth. So uh, let's check out what executables I have available out of which the Townforge D is the most important one in this respect. It's the diamond. And we're gonna fire up the diamond because it will start loading up my current saved status of the blockchain and then connect to the other nodes. And as you saw, it found some other nodes, it synced up to the current state of the game because the blocks are actually kind of... they are storing the history of the game up to this point. So you can actually, if you inspect the individual blocks, you can see the game progress. And um, yeah, so we're synced up, we're good to go. Uh, let's check out quickly the status of the network. We have a single connection uh, net hash rate over there, uh, low uptime, but we're good to go. We need a Townforge wallet. And for this, we're going to run the Townforge dash wallet dash CLI, which will allow us to create a Townforge wallet. I'm going to call that wallet file test and I'm not going to set a password to it, I'm using English, and a word of warning. Please be careful with your wallet files, the passwords and the seed that you can actually see for my wallet over here. If you lose these, you're not going to be able to recover your Townforge account. That's by design, that's pretty much universal in the crypto space. So please be careful with those. I'm not going to enable background mining for now, and you can see that it's actually reporting my unlocked balance, my in-game balance, my overall balance outside the game. Um, and I want to start mining Townforge gold as we talk of it. It's the Townforge currency, the cryptocurrency associated with the game. And I can see my public address over here. And I'm, I want to start mining the cryptocurrency there. I'm going to 
put it over here. I am currently connected to the network. I can see a single outbound connection and I'm going to start mining. If I only copy paste it correctly. And the start mining command will take the number of threads that I'll use. And I'm going to put two threads working to mine me some Townforge gold. Okay, we're mining, we have the diamond running, we're synced up to the network, we're good to go and fire up the game itself. And that is done via the game client executable Townforge. So let's do that right away. We see our lovely splash screen and we're ready to go. At least almost. As you can see, uh, we are not yet logged into a particular game account and that will be done via a wallet. Alright, so what I just did, I loaded my main wallet and I have in-game money, I have out-game money and I've deposited money and I can withdraw it at will. But please note that all in-game actions are public. So if I go and inspect my own history in the game, I can notice that I've created at the block height 587, I've created my initial account with 5,000 Townforge gold. I've received more gold afterwards by depositing. I minted some coins. I started buying uh, land, etc. I gained some badges, which are kind of equivalent to achievements in, in most games and, and so forth. And then I started gaining money. But I'm going to kind of start fresh by inviting myself into the game because it's going to take a while to mine coins with this hash rate at the moment. I'm currently mining with one kilo hashish per second. So that's relatively small amount of hashish that I'm solving per second. So I'm not expecting to find many blocks immediately. To make this a little bit easier, I'm going to invite myself into the game. So let's say I want to create an account or I'm inviting my friend to the game and I'm giving him 2000 gold. I create a unique code for doing that and I have my test wallet which doesn't at the moment have any balance to it. I'm instead going to accept an invitation. Once I discover blocks, I'm mining to this particular wallet so that money would uh, eventually mature and appear over here in wallet balance. However, I will accept the invitation from the kind person Suksusu School and enter the game as Mr. Foo Bar. Now, our account creation has gone into the transaction pool. And a cool feature, we can actually explore the current uh, commands in the transaction pool. We have an account creation, we have a chat message, we have two commands for buying land, and another chat message. This was actually sent by me, and this is by somebody else. Now we just need to wait for our account creation to be mined and since the target time for block discovery is one minute, typically this would take, well, ideally less than a minute at this point because we don't know if somebody's already about to discover a block, but let's see. Yep, that sound is an indication that a block was discovered. Hopefully our command for accepting the invitation was picked up by that miner appears that it wasn't so let's instead showcase some of the features of the game as you can see I'm kind of grabbing the camera with my right mouse button that's kind of a key interaction with the game otherwise it's using pretty standard FPS buttons 
WASD for movement and shift for sprinting. I'm pressing F because I want to go into the flying mode. This is pretty much inspired by Minecraft's uh, creative mode. Okay, and we just got mined into the game. Player Fubar has entered the game. And as you can see, I sent the chat message, ProRides sent the chat message, and Fubar, which is us now, with this account that we've logged in with, is in the game. But we only have white chat messages available because of our low level. Hello, I am a test player account. Pleasure to meet you all. And that goes into the transaction pool. Chat messages are cer a certain special type of transactions. They never get mined per se, but other game actions do get mined as transactions. So what you need to realize is all the game progression, all the actions, market transactions, purchases of uh, blocks, uh, researching new tech, building structures, all of those get mined and appended to the blockchain. That's the beauty of it. Okay, we should have 2000 balance and that we do and we that was extracted from Suksu. We see that we were created on block height 8293 and we can actually this is something important to distinguish since I already mentioned that this is a fork from Monero. The in-game actions are public. I can actually go and check out the other players. I can go and check out Suksu Suisku even though I am Fubar. Uh, I can see what he has in his inventory, I can see his buildings, I can see his history of actions that he's done. Uh, he's been paying land tax, he's been uh, gaining money from, from his uh, buildings and he got a little bonus from inviting a player into the game. The original, if you had created a game account without an invitation, the cost for that is one pound forge gold and that is for anti-spam purposes. Okay, we have 2000 gold, what can we do with that? Well, I'm going to take a look at the immediate center of the game and we notice that there's a kind of a town square and then we have some kind of 2B roads heading to different directions. We can see the compass on the bottom left hand side. We see that it's currently mid-winter, temperatures very low and it's not sowing or harvesting season naturally due to the harsh conditions. But what we will do is we will buy a piece of land and let's go over here and we can actually see that I'm going to buy a 64 by 64 lot and that lot that I just selected with my left mouse button you can see the selection size over here I'm going to send the command for buying that land into the transaction pool. And again, let's check out Explorer. We see that our purchase order went into the transaction pool. And we can actually see what commands were attached to which block. So now we just have to wait for our action to be mined. Uh, other than that, we can already start doing other actions. We will hunt some moose. Oh, no, no, we won't because we don't have labor to do that. So I'm gonna do, um, let's purchase 200, uh, let's purchase half a million um, labor from the infinite uh, supply. That's gonna cost us 200 Townforge gold. As you can see in our transactions that are in the queue, we're buying labor, we're buying land. And in order to build the basic types of buildings, we're going to need sandstone and pine. Uh, I think 10,000 sandstone blocks is fine. And let's buy 30,000 pine because pine will also be used for heating. There's a survivalist aspect to the game. 
where you have to supply your people with food and warmth, but you can enhance those by researching additional tech. Some of them have already been discovered by me on my main account, but I could be selling you the patents to them so you ac gain access to the same tech techs. New block was discovered. Let's hope some of our cute commands got mined. Taking a sip of some modern goodies, EA coffee. So we have some purchase offers going out. The thing with the infinite supply is that we're currently in a test net and there's not too many active players in. This is something that never runs out, but the price has been estimated to be so steep that players can start competing, undercutting that and each other. That's the ele uh, element of economical gameplay. Now our commands for purchasing land and some materials went through. So we are the proud owners of 64 by 64 lot of land. I went to the walker mode. We see that we were assigned uh, this uh, cyan color and black 36 is owned by us all right well a flag has to be assigned a building type in order to build with it so we can look into the building settings of this particular lot it tells us that this flag is large enough for um, what we call economical power so we could be building um, basic residential building is typically what we start off with we're missing some pine actually so we need to buy some additional pine and other than that we see some certain other elements like stability of the land geothermal heating potential enough pine and we have some meat from the moose Let's type this as a basic residential building. We could scale it up, but we're lacking materials for that, so we're gonna make it into food bar hut. That's the name of our building over here. We also notice that there's an empty lot here, that actually I'm uh, about to type into a road on my main account. But this is also counted as a road, so being connected gives you bonuses, being connected to other basic residential buildings or uh, agricultural buildings or craft buildings gives you bonuses. The, there's a complex interplay between the building types, so you want to watch for those in the manual or learn by doing the game. Now our command for typing this building as a basic residential went through so we can start building on it we can see the types of uh, blocks that it has it has sandstone pine vegetation and labor is not a block type that you place in the game it's more of a you need labor to more labor the higher you want to place your blocks so this is the minecraftian voxel based building aspect of the game I should also point out that it's not something that you need to do if you want to play in the game. This would be a perfectly eligible um, lot to gain money from the town treasury, even if I don't build anything on it. This is the aesthetics part of the game. In, although we intend to use the GM accounts for creating incentives to build aesthetically. However, let's do our first basic building. By pressing X, I see the available block types, which were sandstone, pine, and vegetation. And within each, I could choose a certain material. And as you can see, not all of them are available to me because I'm level one newbie. And you gain new levels by gaining uh, badges, Again, for example, check out on Su 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 what kind of badges he's gained um, from the number of buildings. He's got a bronze badge per builder, experimenter, the various number of different building types. He's had uh, from 
Hoarder, he's got the Gold Badge. So there's five levels typically to each. He's also had some in-game money, he's discovered tech, etc, etc. And with these, he's obtained level 20, uh, 26. With those, you can get new chat colors, new materials for your buildings, mostly aesthetical stuff like that. It's not intended to inf uh, affect the economics of the game. It's more for role-playing purposes, really. So, what we are going to do is I'm going to create a little... Um, actually, I'm going to start off by making it symmetrical. I'm right now in the very borders of my lot, so I'm going to shrink it. I'm going to shrink it into a 40 by 40 building. I'm going to make it a floor out of sandstone. Let's use the standard sandstone tile. With a Z key, I can create a batch of blocks on the selection Z key. Oh, sorry went over the borders. Z key, use it for adding lots of building blocks on the selection and C key for removing. Although we can also use Q and E for adding individual blocks. And when I say blocks, I mean the gaming voxel blocks, not anything related to blockchain. With Q, I can add those voxels and with E I can remove them for fine tuning and sculpting like I did for this Pegasus over here. We're gonna make a very rough building over here. I'm gonna make the... I'm gonna make a little road over here. So this is 40 so I need to pick the middle point from here. As you might have noticed, I pressed X to change my current material. I'm going to make my walls. Well, I don't have too many materials available, so I'm going to make my walls out of the same material as my floor. Let's make some walls to our building. Okay, I think we're fine in that respect. Uh, let's fine tune a little doorway. With Q. Nice. Then let's make some kind of a roof. And every step of the way. Cool. Our little building is ready just went through the floor of the world but it would be nice to have some windows so let's cut out a couple windows so 19 is our middle point so let's make a window over here in the lovely town square same thing on the other side not use the same height. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Oh, I did. Oh, I'm not sure which am I balanced? Nope. So now nope. I need to cut one more piece. And then I'm gonna add a little I don't know what what you call that, like a decorative floor. Uh, window board thing on both sides and then I can push this into the transaction pool so this is already a functional building although it's inactive it requires the prerequisite of an agricultural building in order to be activated and after that it's el eligible for subsidies from the town and uh, building types and bonuses all affect how many, how much of the town treasury you obtain back. So when I do purchases from the town, for example, when I 
bought this lot that went into the town treasury but that money is intended to circle back to the players depending on how well they're playing so Fubar is heavily looking into he wants money from his basic residential hut and now we should be seeing plenty of building commands in the transaction pool that's the building being erected one slice at a time so all the horizontal slices are one transaction and we see that the first slice of the building just got mined and the second one as you can see the target of one block per minute is just an approximation so it might change all right our buildings uh, getting there it will be mined and then it will look as exactly when I had it on the planning stage okay we can already go around and walk into our building and it will be appearing bit by bit well that pretty much covers the basics of the game um, if you have any questions, do join us on IRC, there's forums, we have Reddit, Twitter, Discord, all of those, although depending on how things go, more or less, um, I think IRC is our main channel. I hope you enjoyed Townforge, and I hope to see you in game. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to approach me or any of the others who are actively trying to build this open source community driven effort. Alright, cheers!